I can't believe I forgot the golden rule of record collecting. All right, 33ers, I hope all is well. I did a video recently that I called my seven rules for record collecting, which obviously are the seven rules I follow or try to follow when it comes to, to buying music. And as soon as I uploaded that video, I realized I forgot to include my golden rule for record collecting, the golden rule for record collecting. I thought I'm gonna have to come back and do a video talking about that. But as I reflected on this, I realized I have five more rules that I follow when it comes to record collecting. So I'm gonna run through those five additional rules in today's video. In case you missed that original video, here are the first seven rules I follow when it comes to buying records. And these are my rules. I'm not saying everyone should follow these rules. These are my personal rules that I try to follow. One, grab a grail when you see it, as long as it's priced right. Two, only buy used records that are VG+. Three, don't spend more than 40 bucks Canadian or 30 bucks US on a new record. Four, don't drop extra cash on color vinyl. Five, avoid making blind buys. Who can afford that anymore? Six, don't buy seven inch singles. That's a rabbit hole I ain't going down. And seven, don't buy counterfeit records. So those are the original rules. And then here are the five I'm gonna tack on to that. Again, these are my rules. I'm not saying people have to follow these or should follow them. These are the rules I personally follow. Number one on this list is I don't buy picture discs. I know a lot of people love picture discs, but to me, it's something you put on the wall and look at and you don't really listen to, and they don't really sound great. I know they sound better today than they did 20 or 30 years ago. In the 80s, they didn't sound great. I know they sound better now, but I'm still not really a fan of them. Sonically, at least to my ears, they are not up to par with traditional vinyl pressings and I don't want to buy a record just for display purposes so me personally I don't buy picture discs. All right 33 years one of my rules in life is to buy quality stuff it lasts longer and when it comes to record storage cabinets Sidetrack Workshop is all about quality and they are also the sponsor of today's video. These record storage consoles are gorgeous. This is not flat packed, bolted together furniture. This is the real deal. I'm talking high quality, sturdy, all wood construction, handcrafted in the USA by Sidetrack Workshop. These cabinets come to you fully assembled. You only need to screw on the feet and shipping is free in the US. Dear 33ers, you spend a lot of time and money on your record collection. Showcase it proudly in style with these beautiful designs. Head over to sidetrackworkshop.com to learn more. And when you're ready to buy, use code channel 33 for 10% off. Now back to the show. Number two, and this one's important to me, is buy what you want. Don't be pressured to buy what's cool or what other people think you should buy. There's so many of these lists online and videos on YouTube with people talking about the 50 essential records that every record collector should own, or even in the comments of my videos. I get a lot of good recommendations, but sometimes people are like, man, I can't believe you don't have that record. You're not a true record collector if you don't own this record. It's the best album of all time. And sure, many times those albums are awesome, but we all have individual taste, right? And what I love, you may not love, and uh, vice versa. So I try not to feel pressured to buy what other people think I should buy or what, what is currently cool or trending, that kind of thing. Number three kind of goes together with that last one. And this one's sometimes hard to do, but I really try to avoid FOMO or the fear of missing out. And it's difficult sometimes now because the whole modern record industry is based in many respects on the fear of missing out. There's so many limited edition albums, buy it now or you may never get it again. And that's the whole philosophy in many respects behind Record Store Day, right? These limited edition albums were released on Record Store Day and if you don't get them, you may never get them again. I know it's more and more, even the Record Store Day records are being reissued, so it's maybe less of a factor now, but fear of missing out, man, with record collecting, with collecting really anything, movies, books, um, sports, memorabilia, baseball cards, that kind of stuff. A lot of that is driven by this whole fear of missing out. So again, I try to avoid that. I think it's limited edition, right? If I don't get it, is it the end of the world? 
do I only want to buy this because it is limited edition and it's a one and done? It's uh, this whole mental process I go through just to make sure I'm buying a record for the right reasons. Number four, and this one's kind of an important rule I follow in this rule is to break the rules when I have to, right? Like in my previous video, I said, don't spend more than 40 bucks on a new record, but there are always exceptions. I love deluxe box sets and deluxe versions of my favorite albums, and those sell for more than 40 bucks. Um, the last Judas Priest album was a double LP and it retailed, I think, for like 45 bucks or something like that. So it's okay to break the rules once in a while. I say avoid making blind buys, and I usually do avoid making blind buys, at least nowadays, because records are so expensive, but once in a blue moon for the right price, sure, I'll make a blind buy. So I do think it's important to break the rules when you have to, or when you want to, or when you sense that this is an exception for whatever reason. And finally, number five, this is the golden rule. This is probably the most important rule. And I can't believe I forgot to mention it in my first video, but that's to have fun, man. Record collecting, listening to music, accumulating all the stuff we have on our shelves should be fun. And that applies to any pastime that I have, whether it's buying movies, whether it's buying interesting whiskeys for the bar, whether it's whatever, it's all about having fun. I know some people frown upon it when I call record collecting a pastime, and I guess it is. I mean, it's a passion, but to me, music is the passion and the medium on which the music is delivered to me is secondary, right? Whether it's vinyl, uh, compact disc, music streaming. It's the music that ultimately matters. And to me, vinyl records, that's my number one favorite medium, but that's kind of secondary. But yeah, man, it's all about having fun, right? If you're worried about FOMO, if you're worried about not getting that limited edition thing, if you're forking over ridiculous amounts of money to buy a record from flippers or whatever, to me, that stuff is not fun. So I just try to stay focused to make sure whatever I'm doing when it comes to buying records is fun. Same as doing these videos. If, if I feel one week like too much pressure to do a video or I don't feel like it, I might just skip it it's not fun. To me, that's one of my guiding principles in life, right? Not everything can be fun, but the fun stuff in life should be fun. So when it comes to record collecting, mm -hmm. make sure you're having a good time. All right, 33 those are my five additional rules. What did you think? Let me know in the comments below. Do you have rules you follow? What are they? As always, thank you for watching. I will be back soon. Until then, keep on spinning.